High draft picks with unsuccessful NBA careers get labeled as busts, and these players are routinely ridiculed by the fans and the media. Some busts go broke in a few years, some become farmers, and some are still holding on to their basketball dreams. Here are some of the most famous draft busts in NBA history and their life stories after the NBA. Greg Oden Another top pick by the Blazers and another player whose career was ruined by knee injuries. Greg Oden was the best center in the NCAA in 2007, and by some margin. He was big, strong, and agile, and his game had a lot of resemblance to Shaq's. Portland had the number one pick. They chose Oden before Kevin Durant, and they chose wrong. Instead of arguably the best scorer ever, they selected a dominant NCAA center who ended up playing only 82 games for the team due to multiple debilitating knee injuries. Oden attempted a comeback with the Heat in 2014, but he couldn't really move anymore. And after that, he continued his basketball journey in China, but there, he had to accept that his pro hoop days are numbered. Oden then fell into depression and started developing alcohol and opioid addiction. However, after his old college coach reached out, the former number one pick returned to Ohio State and got his life back on track. He earned his degree from Ohio State University in the sports industry in 2019, and later that year, he became an advisor for a Baltimore-based company that provides financial education and consulting services to amateur and professional athletes. It was a logical step forward after he worked as a counselor at the NBA's Rookie Transition Program when he talked about the ups and downs of NBA life, what it takes to be a pro, and how fickle an NBA career can be. Darko Milicic Darko grew up poor, and he usually only had enough money to buy himself some pastry and yogurt after practice. But after he got selected second overall in the famous 2003 NBA Draft, there came a lot of guaranteed dollars, and Darko had quickly developed the knack for spending. Cars he barely drove, a boat he crashed and only used a few times, and more parties than practices at the gym, all contributed to a burning hole in his bank account. When his accountant called and asked Darko how come he went broke, Milicic was pretty lackadaisical about it. Don't worry, man, the new paycheck arrives on the 15th. Even though Darko was spending a ton, he still earned $52 million over a 10-year NBA career and has managed to save some of it. After he abruptly left the NBA at the age of 28, Milicic brought 125 acres of land in his native Serbia and is now growing and selling apples for a living. He says that he enjoys spending time among the apple trees and that he's much happier in agriculture than he ever was during his basketball career. He also had a memorable yet very unspectacular kickboxing match which he lost after he broke the scale at the weigh-ins. He plays basketball for fun with some of his friends and if he really wanted, he could still play in Europe considering he's still only 35 years old. But between three kids and his fruits, Darko says he's not even slightly interested in that. How about them apples? Anthony Bennett In 2017, Anthony Bennett lost his job as an NBA basketball player. Every year, more than 50 players lose their place on the roster for one reason or another, mainly because they are not good enough to play in the NBA. These players are usually second-round picks that didn't pan out. But it was unprecedented that a first overall pick would draw zero interest from the entire league after just four years. Once Bennett realized he wasn't going to find another job in the NBA, he moved to Europe in 2016, where he actually won the EuroLeague with Fenerbahce. However, they won it despite Bennett. It wasn't like he was a big part of the team, as he averaged just 1.2 points in 10 games. After a few seasons in the G League, Bennett got a second chance in the NBA with the Rockets in 2019. It remains a mystery what Houston saw in Bennett except for one extra body in training camp. However, he was soon waived without ever suiting up for the Rockets. While his NBA career is deader than a doornail, Bennett is the owner of a clothing brand and he still plays for the Canadian national team. And we could see him in the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. Sam Bowie Sam Bowie would have had to find a cure for cancer for him to be remembered for something other than the fact he got drafted in front of Michael Jordan in the 1984 NBA Draft. His entire basketball career has been a big what if, and he's been forever labeled as a bust just because he wasn't Michael Jordan. The truth is that Sam Bowie was actually a decent player, but he couldn't stay on the floor to prove it. An injury-prone big man had a solid 10-year NBA career, and after it ended, Bowie successfully traded NBA floors for racetracks horse racetracks, to be exact. Bowie found success in owning and training horses for harness racing, with his animals often competing in the famous Red Mile track in Lexington, Kentucky. For a while, Bowie was also a color commentator for Kentucky basketball. Kwame Brown Kwame Brown famously got drafted by Michael Jordan, who also became his teammate with the Washington Wizards three months after Kwame was drafted. Jordan's famous tenacity and mental warfare didn't work well with Brown. By trying to make him stronger and tougher, 
Jordan only managed to get him scared and completely unconfident. And even though he turned into a solid NBA center after Jordan's final retirement, Kwame never developed into a player that was worth a top pick. He spent 12 years in the NBA, and we could last see him in 2017 when he played in Ice Cube's Big 3 Basketball League. He's currently writing a book about his life, and it will be interesting to see what he'll say about Jordan after all these years. Hashim Thabit Hashim Thabit won the genetic lottery for an NBA center. Standing at 7'3 and with a 7'6 wingspan, he was supposed to be the next Akembe. The Grizzlies sure hoped so when they drafted him second overall in 2009, but Thabit turned into one of the biggest busts of this century. He averaged just 2.2 points and 2.7 rebounds per game over seven NBA seasons, and he never developed any tangible basketball skill. But, as they say, you can't teach height, and Thabit will always have his size as a trump card, and that's why he's still able to play basketball professionally. Thabit played in the G League in 2020, and this last season, he signed with the Sinshu Lioneers of the Taiwanese Premier League. Adam Morrison Adam Morrison is famous for three things. The first one is his unusual look for a basketball player with long hair and a thin mustache. Morrison always looked more like a tall musician than an athlete. The second one is his stellar junior season at Gonzaga, where he led the NCAA in scoring with 28.1 points per game and won the Oscar Robertson Trophy as the Collegiate Player of the Year. And the third thing people remember him for is his underwhelming NBA career and the status of one of the biggest NBA busts ever. After Gonzaga, Adam was selected third overall by the Charlotte Bobcats, and as a rookie, he showcased bad defense and even worse shooting efficiency. In his second season, he tore his ACL, which effectively meant his bad rookie year would likely be his best one. Before he retired from basketball, Morrison won two NBA titles with the Lakers, even though he barely played. Morrison earned $17 million in his career, and because he's a smart investor and a moderate spender, he is enjoying his life to the fullest. He lives just outside of Spokane and spends most of his time with his daughters and son. When he isn't with his family, he's either playing poker or golf, just living life on his own terms. Bryant Reeves Bryant Reeves was a 7-foot, 275-pound behemoth of a man, and those proportions made him 6th overall pick in the 1995 NBA Draft. He was the first pick in Grizzlies franchise history who played in Vancouver at the time, and Reeves was supposed to be the franchise cornerstone and the man who will battle Shaq, Hakeem, and other great centers of that era. But the player who everybody knew by his nickname, Big Country, never delivered on that promise. Despite a few good seasons, he was forced to retire after six seasons because he was overweight, which contributed to chronic back problems. Congruent to his nickname, Big Country returned to his home in Oklahoma, bought 300 acres of land, and he's been working as a farmer ever since his NBA days were over. Sean Bradley Standing at 7'6", Sean Bradley is one of the tallest humans to ever play in the NBA. Because of his extraordinary height and length, Bradley was an elite shot blocker, which made him the second pick in the 1993 NBA Draft. Despite solid defensive play, Bradley wasn't supposed to go that high in the draft, as he averaged just 8 points per game in his 12-year career. After basketball, Bradley became involved with West Ridge Academy in Utah, a private school for youth at risk, serving as a mentor and a coach. He was also a part of NBA's Basketball Without Borders and various other charities across the globe. Unfortunately, Bradley was recently hit by a car while he was driving his bicycle, and he was left paralyzed as a result of the crash. Joe Smith Joe Smith was the first overall pick in the 1995 NBA Draft after winning the Naismith College Player of the Year Award at the University of Maryland. Even though he averaged a respectable 17 points per game in his first three years in the league, it was straight downhill from there. Smith got traded seemingly every year, and by the end of his career, he played for 12 different NBA teams, which tied the NBA record. Because Smith bought an expensive house everywhere he played, along with the cars, jewelry, and other amenities that are the usual suspects for every deep NBA wallet, he squandered every last dollar of the $61 million he earned in his 16-year NBA career, which secured him a spot on CNBC's Back in the Game, a show hosted by former MLB star Alex Rodriguez that helps former athletes who are struggling with money issues. Smith managed to bounce back and is now working as a player development coach in Atlanta.